I'd like to inv in, uh, invite President Begay to make remarks on this day, President Begay. Yad eh anot kohkwe when it lunigi bake needs in shea Navajo Nation president should in at Ani Adeko Ishah. Good to be here with you today on Indigenous Peoples Day. You know, when you talk about being indigenous, that means you have a language, that means you have prayer, that means you have ceremony, the way you connect with the spirit world. That also means that you are one with the land, the air, the water, that you breathe, that you walk on, that you drink. It also means that you have a way of life that sustains you, that holds you together. It is when indigenous people forget their land or their language, it's when they start to lose themselves. And that has been true over time, over the centuries, is that oftentimes one will try to cause another to forget their language, their way of life, their prayers, their ceremonies, as it was with our people, the indigenous people of this land. Because at one time we were told that it was illegal to speak our language. It was illegal to use our language. Some of us endured those days, those times when the government said, you cannot speak your language because your language will always keep you in poverty. Your language always will keep you sub uh, servitude to other cultures, to other people. But however, being indigenous means that you're proud to be who you are. You're proud that you're Navajo. You're proud that you're Apache. You're proud that you're of the Sioux Nation. You're proud of the different pueblos that exist here in New Mexico. One of the most indigenous state here in this country. It also means that when one tries to deny another their indigeneity, it also weakens that that community, that state, that nation, as it, ha as it has happened over history. Because when we start to respect and honor our differences, it doesn't separate us, but rather unites us. When we start to honor and respect each other's differences, that makes us stronger, stronger nation, as it has been proven here in this country and in this state. My people were we were gathered together back about 155 years ago. We were marched through this city, Santa Fe, on our way to Bosque Redondo. We were put on display publicly for people to see that the great nation, the great Navajo nation was defeated and that they were no longer gonna be a nation, but they were gonna be taken out of this area and taken to a place called Oklahoma that we are not indigenous to, or even taken up to Montana, North Dakota, the land of another indigenous people. So we were marched towards Oklahoma and landed in Bosque Redondo for four or five years. A lot of our children, babies and elders died along the way. People made fun of them as they marched through these communities here in New Mexico on the way to Bosque Redondo not realizing that, that this was an indigenous people with their own language and prayers and land. They had a lot of respect for themselves. We didn't make it to Oklahoma. They didn't take us there. Our Natanis, our leaders, stood up for our Navajo Nation people and said, we don't want to go to another indig indigenous people's land. We want to return to our sacred mountain that we our ancestors have long lived on. And through those negotiation times, our people were able to negotiate with the United States government a treaty, the treaty we call the Treaty of 1868. The Treaty of 1868 is a document, it's an agreement, it's a contract between the great Navajo nation, a nation within a nation, and the United States government. Because of all the treaties that were signed, no treaty has been signed with a state or with a community or with a city. 
Treaties are only signed between nations. And so the Treaty of 1868 recognized and established strongly that the Navajo people were a nation. And we have always been that from time immemorial, from times before other, other nations entered into this country. And as we signed that 1868 treaty, it, was, it, it, it said to us and to the people of New Mexico and the Southwest and the United States, that when you are a people, when you are an indigenous people, and you have a language, you have prayers, you have ceremonies, and that you respect others, and you respect yourself, and that you honor yourself, is that no matter what you go through, no matter what other others take you through, you will stand, you will survive, you will rise above that. And the Navajo Nation has done exactly that. Because we thought, they thought that we were going to be extinguished. They thought our language was going to die. But today we are the largest tribe in, in North America. Today we have a language that is strong that our children still use. And we have prayers that are still being, being uttered. We have ceremonies that are, being, that are still being practiced by our people. We are stronger than ever before as indigenous to this area. And because we have been received, we've been respected, we've been honored, we've contributed to the life of New Mexican and Arizona and Utah and others. And we will continue to do that. We will continue to do so. And so I just want to say to the mayor, to the city of Santa Fe, thank you for, for the last three years calling this not Columbus Day, but calling it Indigenous Peoples Day, and that is rightfully so. All of us are Indigenous people. Whether you're from other countries around the world or from one of the tribal groups here in America, we are all Indigenous. Hold on to your language. Hold on to the things that your elders taught you. Hold on to the things that make you who you are as a person. Respect others that do not speak the same language. Honor those that do not have the same type of prayers. Respect those that have different ceremonies that you may not understand. Appreciate it, be there supporting them because that is what make us strong. That is why Indigenous Day is so important because it is differences that makes us who we are as a nation, a strong nation. And as long as we respect and honor each other's indigeneity, we will continue to be the greatest nation on the face of the earth, as it has been with the great Navajo Nation, as we have risen above all things that we, in, that we, were, that we were told we could not do, all the way from not being allowed to use our language until, eight, until 1982 is when the United States reversed that order just a few years back. 1982 is when we were told you can now use your language again in schools before we were denied that. In spite of that, the Navajo Nation court talkers helped save this world from itself. The Navajo language was used to win the war so that we can enjoy freedom that we share right here in this plaza, in this state and in, in all the 50 states in America. And so it is one respect for one another, whether it's your language or prayers, that will continue to make us who we are as a nation. So I want to say again, thank you for honoring the great Navajo Nation, respecting the great Navajo Nation. Thank you for honoring and respecting each other's way of life, because that is what makes us who we are, a great nation. Thank you, and God bless America. God bless the Navajo Nation.